Good evening. Here are tonight's top stories. Indio Miguel is hospitalized after a confrontation at Tarapur Back Dam, resulting in a chop wound. A devastating fire engulfs the Colors of India store and bath settlement. Additionally, a man is apprehended for the attempted theft of a wooden boat and a 200 hp outboard engine. The government takes steps to safeguard Guyana from oil spills and liabilities with new legislation. Also, McCorp graduates nine in heavy-duty equipment maintenance training. Lastly, Vera Florence celebrates her remarkable 100th birthday. Stay tuned for more updates on these stories. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more news. Confrontation at Tarapur Back Dam leaves Indio Miguel hospitalized with chop wound. Indio Miguel, 24, of Karawab, Pomeroon, is currently hospitalized following an alleged shopping incident during a confrontation at Tarapur Back Dam, Middle Mazaruni River. Reports indicate that Miguel sustained a severe chop wound to his abdomen around 1900 hours HRS on Thursday, during an altercation at the mining site. According to information provided by police headquarters, Miguel had left his camp and visited a nearby shop, where he consumed alcoholic beverages. Upon returning to the camp, Miguel purportedly expressed his intention to leave the job, which seemingly displeased his employer. Subsequently, an argument ensued between Miguel and the suspect, leading to the latter wielding a sharp weapon and inflicting the chop wound on Miguel. Following the altercation, Miguel was promptly transported to the mining company's infirmary, where a medical examiner administered initial treatment. Due to the severity of his injuries, Miguel was later transferred to the Georgetown Public Hospital, where he remains admitted as a patient. Authorities are actively investigating the circumstances surrounding the incident, with the perpetrator yet to be apprehended. Miguel's condition remains a concern, and updates on his health are awaited. Devastating Fire Engulfs Colors of India a Store in Bath Settlement The vibrant community of Bath Settlement, West Coast Burbis, is reeling from the aftermath of a tragic incident that unfolded on Friday, as the beloved Colors of India store fell victim to a devastating fire. Mahendra Lachman, 28, brother to esteemed businessman Ravi Lachman, who owned the popular Indian Wear boutique, recounted the heart-wrenching events that led to the destruction of their family's business establishment. Mahendra explained that the building, which housed both the Indian Wear store and a vehicular workshop managed by him, became engulfed in flames around 1500 hours hours. He had momentarily left the premises to conduct a test drive for a customer's vehicle when he received alarming news of the fire. Rushing back to the scene, Mahendra found himself confronted with a scene of chaos and destruction. Despite his efforts, he was unable to salvage any belongings from the blazing inferno. Compounding the tragedy, Mahendra revealed that his brother Ravi was currently abroad, leaving him unable to reach out and inform him of the calamity that had befallen their family business. Tragically, the Colors of India store was not only a place of business but also a home for Mahendra and his extended family, including his wife, parents, and siblings. Thankfully, there were no reported injuries among the occupants, but the fire wreaked havoc on their livelihoods, resulting in the loss of millions of dollars worth of clothing stocks, including items belonging to loyal customers. Are you looking for a job? Shell Gas Station is hiring. We are seeking pump attendants and cashier to join our dynamic team. We are located at Regent and King Street. Give us a call on 6286336 or 2257023. We look forward to hearing from you. Man apprehended for attempted theft of wooden boat and 200 HP outboard engine. In a daring act thwarted by vigilant security measures, a man was apprehended at 7th Avenue Beach area in Bardica Town in the early hours of Friday, April 26. 2024, while attempting to steal a wooden boat with its 200 HP outboard engine. The boat's owner, a prominent businessman in Bardica, reported that his prized possession, moored securely along 6th Avenue Beach area, was discovered missing during his routine checks. Utilizing his property's security systems, he swiftly located the stolen boat and engine at 7th Avenue Beach area, approximately 100 meters away. 
Upon confrontation, the would-be thief claimed he arrived in Bardica with an individual known as a Harrell or Shortman, in a wooden boat equipped with a 75 HP outboard engine. He alleged his intention was to collect the targeted boat with its 200 HP outboard engine. However, his possession of a non-compatible outboard engine key raised suspicions regarding his motives. The suspect, purportedly hailing from Cameron and employed in cement mixing, stated he was merely checking sane nets. Subsequently, he was handed over to local authorities for further investigation into the circumstances surrounding the incident. Photographs accompanying the report depict the apprehended suspect alongside images of both the stolen wooden boat with its 200 HP outboard engine and the boat he arrived in, equipped with a 75 HP outboard engine. The incident underscores the importance of robust security measures in safeguarding valuable assets and the necessity for swift action in thwarting criminal activities. Authorities continue their inquiries into this matter to ensure justice is served. Government initiates legislation to safeguard Guyana from oil spills and liabilities. In response to the growing importance of safeguarding Guyana's environment and interests in the face of potential oil spills, the government is actively crafting new legislation. Vice President Dr. Barrett Jagdio announced during his weekly press conference that the new law, aimed at fortifying the nation's defenses against oil spills and associated liabilities, could be enacted by mid-year. Dr. Jagdio outlined that the proposed legislation would bolster the provisions related to liabilities in existing oil agreements and environmental permits. Moreover, it would extend coverage to parties involved in the transportation of fuel, thereby enhancing the enforcement of liabilities across the board. We are fortifying the oil spill legislation, which will hopefully be passed before we go to recess in August, stated the vice president. This legislation will further strengthen the government and the regulatory authorities' tools not just to manage a spill but to enforce liabilities on offending parties, including parties that transport fuel. Addressing concerns about existing protective measures, Dr. Jagdio reminded reporters that Guyana already benefits from significant environmental liability insurance, including a US$600 million US dollar policy as required by the environmental permit issued prior to the commencement of production. Additionally, ExxonMobil Guyana provides a US$2 billion US dollar insurance guarantee. Dr. Jagdio emphasized that offshore oil companies operating in Guyana also possess assets within the country that could be leveraged to cover expenses arising from potential spills. This multi-layered approach underscores the government's commitment to ensuring robust safeguards against environmental disasters while holding responsible parties accountable for their actions. As Guyana continues to navigate its burgeoning oil industry, the introduction of comprehensive legislation underscores a proactive stance towards environmental protection and responsible resource management. The proposed laws aim to reinforce the nation's resilience and preparedness in mitigating risks associated with offshore oil exploration and production. McCorp graduates 9 in heavy-duty equipment maintenance training. Machinery Corporation of Guyana Limited, McCorp, has expanded its efforts to address the significant demand for technical skills in Guyana by training an additional 9 young individuals in heavy-duty equipment maintenance. The recent graduates completed a rigorous 6-month training program, equipping them with the necessary expertise to meet the challenges of maintaining heavy-duty machinery. Among the graduates were Alex Bahadur, Imran Mohammed, Ramon Bandu, Tyrese Rose, Esrin Joseph, Andy Smith, Clinton Edwin, Natisha Naomi, and Denzel John Nathan. Notably, Bahadur, 24, stood out as the valedictorian of the program, while Naomi, 22, emerged as the sole female trainee in the cohort. During the graduation ceremony held at McCorp's Providence location on the East Bank Demerara, Bahadur expressed his lifelong passion for machinery and equipment. He initially obtained a certificate in agricultural machinery from the Government Technical Institute GTI, before pursuing McCorp's trainee technician program. Despite initial setbacks, Bahadur's perseverance paid off, culminating in his achievement as valedictorian. This serves as a testament that one must not give up. Try and try again until you succeed. This is just the beginning of a long road ahead, remarked Bahadur. 
According to German Consorgra, President and General Manager of McCorp, the training initiative reflects the company's commitment to providing robust product support for the machinery it distributes. Consorgra emphasized that product support is the cornerstone of McCorp's operations, underscoring the company's dedication to cultivating a skilled workforce. As the exclusive authorized Caterpillar dealer in Guyana, McCorp plays a pivotal role in enhancing technical expertise within the country. With the completion of the training program, the nine graduates are poised to contribute significantly to meeting the growing demand for technical skills locally. Encouraged to leverage their newfound technical skills, the graduates were urged to actively participate in addressing the nation's evolving needs in heavy-duty equipment maintenance. McCorp remains steadfast in its commitment to fostering a skilled workforce and providing comprehensive support for Guyana's industrial growth and development. Vera Florence celebrates 100 years. In the heart of Queenstown, nestled amidst the bustling streets and vibrant community life, a remarkable soul reaches a milestone cherished by few, 100 years on earth. Vera Florence Venture, a name synonymous with resilience and community spirit, reflects on a century of unwavering dedication and boundless love. Born into a bustling household on Cave Street, Queenstown, Region 2, Pomeroon Supinum, Venture's journey has been nothing short of extraordinary. The mother of nine, Vera Florence Venture, embodied the essence of strength, even in the face of adversity. Though life's trials claimed the lives of two of her children, Patricia Branch and Leroy Venture, Venture's nurturing spirit prevailed, shaping the lives of her remaining seven children with boundless love and guidance. At the tender age of 24, Venture's journey of selflessness began. Alongside her husband, she embraced various roles, from domestic work in Georgetown to seamstress and carpenter. Together, they not only supported their home but also dedicated themselves to uplifting their community. Venture's passion for community service knew no bounds. As the first woman to lead the village council, she blazed trails, demonstrating her unwavering commitment to progress. Her involvement with the National Democratic Council NDC, and the Women's Institute underscored her fervent desire to foster growth and development. Yet, Venture's impact transcended titles. As a founding member of the Local Housing Scheme and president of the Women's Institute, her influence was palpable. Her dedication to sewing, agriculture, and community initiatives earned her prestigious accolades, including the coveted first prize. Even in her twilight years, Venture's spirit remained indomitable. Despite migrating to the U.S. over six decades ago, her heart never strayed far from her homeland. Her return last year symbolized a homecoming filled with warmth and cherished memories. Beyond her accolades, Vera Florence Venture's essence shines brightest in her daily rituals. From her cherished Bible to her late-night conversations with God, she embodies faith and humility. Her kitchen, a haven of warmth and laughter, bears witness to her boundless generosity. Jacqueline Prince, a dear friend, fondly reminisces about Venture's influence, describing her as both strict and loving. Through her guidance, Venture instilled values of respect and kindness, shaping generations to come. As Queenstown celebrates the centenary of Vera Florence Venture, her legacy of resilience, compassion, and community spirit continues to inspire all who have been touched by her remarkable life. Here's to 100 years of unwavering dedication and boundless love, and to the countless lives she has touched along the way. Happy birthday, Vera Florence Venture!